This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about creating the look of a rewind effect. Now I'm going to take this a little bit further than the question that was posed to me. And we're going to make this rewind effect look like an old VHS tape. Now a question came to me from William, who is a long time viewer. He asks, right now, I'm trying to make a commercial spot and would like to reverse and speed up my entire sequence. I was watching your lesson, lesson 63 on basic motion effects on the creative cow, ah, the good old days, but I was unable to figure out how to achieve my goal because I am working on a newer version. My goal is to take my sequence that is constructed of 10 clips, reverse them, and make the entire sequence five to six times faster trying to create a look as though I rewinded the entire sequence. When I try to do this, the speed changes, but the clip length does not, and it just includes more source material. If you could give me some ideas how to reverse the entire sequence and speed it up five to six times, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for all your help and great videos, William. Well, William, I'm going to show this two ways in this lesson. I'm going to show you how you can do this with a single clip, and then we're going to take it one step further and answer your question on the best way to do it with five, six, seven, eight, ten, 10, 100 clips in your timeline. It doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how you can do this technique and take it to the next level using Boris Continuum Complete. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer, and here's the single shot we're going to start out with before we jump into the multi-shot example. And the first thing we need to decide is the range that we want to rewind. Now, I think I'll give this a good, I don't know, maybe 12 seconds. So we'll mark an endpoint there. We'll just go plus 12. And what I normally like to do is to add edits, just to make our life a little bit easier, a little bit more visual here. I have add edit map to F6 on the keyboard. Now, I just want to make sure that the range that we're going to be selecting is going to be 12 seconds. So we'll just extend this down by one frame there we go perfect you can see right at the top center of the composer window 12 seconds long and this is going to represent the range that is going to be rewound now keep in mind when we hit play it's going to play all the way down past this once we get to this point it's going to rewind very quick and it's going to start to play again so let's get in and let's do this i'm going to go plus 12 we're going to come back that one frame so that when we mark the out point we do have a proper 12 seconds and once i have this range marked we're going to come down to the motion effect editor and what i want to do is i want to give this a value somewhere around let's say minus 800 percent now obviously this is going to vary slightly based on the length of your rewind, how you know how much is going to be contained within that one shot. So keep that in mind, it right, might require a little bit of trial and error. So I'm just going to punch in minus 800, that gives me a frames per second of minus 192 frames per second. I'm going to switch this over to be a VTR style effect, and we are going to create it. I'm simply going to hit play, that's looking pretty good, let's mark that, it's a second and 12 frames. I'm going to edit it in right here at the end of that range that we marked. So what you're going to notice now is it's going to play down. It's then going to rewind. However, the problem that we now have is that it actually jumps down to continue where this edit left off. So what we actually want to do is copy the range that we had sped up in reverse. And we want to add that back in so that what happens is, is that clip, it's almost like a ping pong effect. It rewinds and then starts to play again. Okay, so let's now get into BCC and let's spice this up a little bit because to be honest, as much as that does look like a rewind effect, you know, maybe it looks like that on a DVD, but really for me, I associate a rewind effect with that old VHS tape look when you rewound the tape. So let's hit Command or Control and 8 on the keyboard based on whether you are on Mac or on Windows. Now you'll see I actually have it already called up because I had started to type in damage right here. Now you'll see that we have a few options to choose from. We actually have a Sapphire TV damage effect, 
But in our case, I'm going to use the BCC damaged TV in BCC stylized. We're going to take the effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto the motion effect that we have in our timeline. And once it's there, you'll see the default state of the effect. Now, keep in mind, this is a damaged TV look. So the default state is going to look like a damaged TV. But what we want to do is we want to take this we want to reset it and then make it look the way that we need it to. Now I'm going to step into effects mode, my shortcut shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it right here at the left side of the timeline window. Let's now come up to our presets. I'm going to drop them down and I'm going to select null, which represents nothing. The effect is right back on its base just like we had actually come in and not added anything at all. Now I'm switching control type over to manual and what's important to keep in mind is that once we do that what we want to make sure of is that the distortion amount for the edges is set to zero just like such. Okay let's now get in and let's add that roll to our footage. Now you might think that when you're doing a roll because we are rewinding the footage we're going to be working in a negative value but we're not actually going to do that. We're actually going to work in a positive value and I'll show show you why right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the vertical rolling speed to be somewhere around minus 25. Okay. Now you'll notice that as soon as I do that we actually get the rolling effect that we want. However the roll is actually seemingly happening forward as we're moving down. I actually want it to look like this so that it looks like it's rewinding. So therefore, inside of our effects editor, let's set the rolling speed to be plus 25. Now, once I have it at plus 25, I come back, I hit play. You'll see now when it rewinds, it actually looks like it's rewinding. Okay. Now, to be honest, we could leave it like that. But remember, this is a VHS tape that we're creating the look of rewinding. There's going to be little bit of you know ghosting, little bit of noise. So we can get in and add all of that right here from within the effects parameter. I'm going to come down to our noise. Let's just add a bunch of noise to this like such. Let's even get in, add some ghosting. And if we wanted to, what we could even do is get in and adjust the offset of the guns. Now you'll see that as I do this, it's basically just going to pull the guns slightly out of alignment. Now, to be honest, if you're going to get in and add this parameter, you only want it to be very slight, like maybe like minus two, just so that it's slightly off. You'll go in, adjust the green gun offset, the blue gun offset, just ever so slightly to give it that look. Now, one thing that I love about the BCC effects minus the fact that you can create super realistic looks like this is presets. Now for me, I actually have already gotten in and created my own preset for this effect. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to remove this effect altogether. F5 is my shortcut to remove effect. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right there. Let's now come back to the effects palette. I'm going to grab damage TV. We're going to drag it and drop it down. I'm going to step into effects mode. I'm going to navigate over to the preset drop down and you'll see right here is KPM's rewind effect. There it is. Boom. Dropped it in. Come back. Hit play. There's the rewind effect. And there it is again playing in real time. Now keep in mind if we really wanted to get in and even add a further layer of realism what we would actually do is instead of having it as a hard cut I might actually have a few more frames in here of the effect actually starting to play forward having the the uh, noise and you know if we had the gun alignment off just sort of coming back into alignment to actually give it an even more realistic look but to be honest we could be finessing this for hours because you just have so many options inside of that BCC damage TV effect. Now what's important to keep in mind is that the visual effects will take this so far but it's also the sound that's going to take it even further okay. So let's navigate back over to our project window. I'm just going to open up the first bin in the project that has a rewind sound effect as well as a music track. So I'm just going to call up the music track first. We're just going to select the entire track and I'm just going to drop it in right now from the start of our timeline down to where the rewind effect is going to start happening. I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop that music track in there. You'll see it's a little bit loud, so maybe I'm just going to bring it down maybe about, let's say about 9 dB or so. Just so that when we play it back, it's a little bit more reasonable and easy to deal with. Very nice. All right, so now what we want to do now is we want to come in and put in our rewind sound effect that sounds a little something like this. 
Okay, now we're just going to pick it up right from where it starts. Now I'm just going to hit the Caps Lock key on both Mac and Windows just so we can scrub through to right about there. I'm just going to mark that as the endpoint. We're just going to come in. I'm going to mark the range of our rewind and we're just going to drop that sound effect in. Now it might be a little bit loud. I think it's actually okay. And what we're now going to do is simply select the range that we had originally selected to do our motion effect. I'm going to copy that music over here into the preview window. We're going to drop it in and then extend it down if it does all the way to the end of the timeline. And what we now have is the clip playing in real time. It will rewind and then keep playing. There we go. Looking pretty darn close to the old rewind effect. When we rewound our VHS machines, ugh, probably about 20 to 25 years ago. Now, William did ask the original question, what do you do in a situation where you're dealing with multiple clips in a specific range of your timeline and you want to get in and do the same type of effect to those clips? Well, what I have here, let me just close this bin. Let me just close the effects palette. I actually have created a multi-clip sequence. Now you're going to notice that basically what we have is the exact same thing except with multiple clips. So what have I done here? Well, let me show you. I'm just going to play this from about here. You'll see the rewind effect is going to come in pretty much doing exactly what it did before. And then we're going to keep playing. Okay. So what did I do? Well, here's what I did. I actually have a pre-comp here. I'm just going to step into the pre-comp and you will see and what I probably have to do before I do that is to actually unmute those clips. Let me just step into our, there we go, perfect. Into our pre-comp, you'll see here's the edit that I created. What I then did was I took this edit and I mixed it down. Now I know that I've always told you in the past, friends don't let friends use video mix downs. But in this case, I have prepared myself. What I have done is I've created the mix down, but what I did was I pre-comped all the clips contained in the mix down. So you'll see if I switch tracks, these are the exact same clips sitting on top of each other all the way down to where the rewind effect happens. Then what I did was I simply took that pre-comp and I muted it in my timeline. So this way, if I was to come down to take a look, there's actually nothing there. Okay, now I could get into hiding this track if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that because for me, as soon as I see a pre-comp in my timeline that has been muted, I know that I have a video mix down probably on top of that layer that I've done some sort of effects work to. So this way, no matter what happens, I can always go back, make changes if I need to, and then relay those clips back in. Okay, so basically that's how you're going to create the same look with a multi-clip timeline inside of Avid Media Composer. Again, taking what might be an ordinary effect or an ordinary look and making it extraordinary by adding a little bit of flair using Boris Continuum Complete's Damage TV effect. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. And if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.